Welcome to part 4 of lecture 5 of Bluff Body Aerodynamics. So we run this question about why um, we want to have the peak of the roof arch as far forward as we can. The reason is that basically by doing this we're reducing the amount of curvature on the back part of the roof. Um, that minimizes the strength of the adverse pressure gradient there and is going to increase the base pressure um, and reduce the overall vehicle drag. So now if we look at the sides of the vehicle, we curve out the body sides. This is something that we again can reduce the drag coefficient. And the reason is that at the front, it makes it easier to round the front corners and at the back, it helps prevent separation at any sort of boat tail, which is sort of a narrowing of the vehicle at the back end um, in, in a relatively sharp, sharp manner. Um, so here again, we see the drag coefficient goes down when we sort of bow out the sides. Um, but the drag coefficient times the area here, this one's an interesting one. Here, um, the, the drag coefficient reduction is sufficient um, that once we get to large enough uh, bowing, we actually get a drop in CD times A, even if the frontal area has gone up. So that's, that's, that's what we, again, this is what we see here. Sorry, so here this is shown for two different designs. I'm just going to focus on the bottom two figures here now. And uh, you know, looking at the difference of drag versus CD. So here we look at CD times A, which is going to scale with the drag force. Um, so we definitely reduce the drag coefficient when we curve those body sides, but it only reduces the drag if the coefficient goes down faster than the area rises. So we see that in this design. Um, but we don't see it in, in this design. So the answer is it depends, and it depends on the details of the shape of the vehicle. So mostly we want to keep the frontal area constant when this helps, or when we do this to, to make sure that uh, we actually get a net benefit in drag. But it can be the case, depending on the shape of the vehicle, that even if the frontal area goes up, we can still get a benefit. There's also, and this one's a little counterintuitive, uh, Extending the, the width of the sides of the vehicle beyond the just edge of the wheel wells can actually serve to reduce drag as well, um, surprisingly. And the reason is that this helps to confine separated flow around the wheel um, to the inside of the wheel well. It essentially helps prevent it from spilling over onto the sides or back of the vehicle. Um, so we can sort of push out the, those vehicle sides a little bit um, at the wheel well. So we see at the top, this is a little figure, it's not really obvious what we're looking at here in the top right. This is like a top-down view of one of the wheel wells sliced through the tire. So this is this is this is the tire. You're seeing these sort of black funky shapes and the sort of that's the rim. Um, that's a hubcap, I think. Uh, so this is a wheel well shape. So this is what we're talking about here, is sort of extending um, this Y2 value on the back side and Y1 is sort of ahead of it. Um, and what we see is the trend is the same in both cases, um, that as we uh, sort of bring Y1 and Y2 out uh, beyond zero, where zero is sort of the you know flush with the edge of the tire, uh, we actually get a reduction in drag. Another thing, although this one's a fairly small effect, um, is the window recesses, right? So there's typically some recess uh, between the sort of metallic frame around the window and the window itself. And if this is too deep, it can increase the amount of drag. Um, if it's less than five millimeters or so, though, it doesn't really matter and it doesn't help to make it more flush. Um, you can see that here, that once, once we're sort of less than five millimeters, things flatten out. 